إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank him and we should praise Allah and thank him all the time because we enjoy endless bounties from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we thank him for guiding us to Islam we thank him for saving us from shirk and disbelief and hypocrisy. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us firm upon his path. We thank him for guiding us to the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and saving us from innovations. We thank him subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to be on the path of Asalaf al Salih, the Sahaba, the companions, alayhim, not being on the path of the deviant sects who deviated away from the path that the Prophet ﷺ left for us. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us beneficial knowledge that produces righteous actions. And we ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us our sins and our shortcomings. Strengthen us in iman and faith to grant us taqwa, piety, and to protect us from the trials and tribulations. I welcome all of you, my noble brothers and sisters of Islam, in this uh, session number eight. We're going to continue reading from the book Advice Regarding the Book of Allah, explanation of selected lines of poetry from Al Mimiya of the noble Shaykh Hafid Hakami, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, the explanation of the noble Sheikh Dr. Abdul Razak al Badr Hafidahullah. We go and read the chapter on the page 99. The title of the chapter of the Quran contains admonitions and lessons. Quran contains admonitions and lessons. Qala al Alama Hafid Hakami Rahimahullah. أخباره عظة أمثاله عبر وكله عجب صحقا لذي صممي He said its news is an admonition Its examples are lessons All of it is amazing All of it is amazing Distancing those who are deaf Meaning how far away from all khair, those who are deaf and do not act in accordance to it. In the explanation, <clears throat> Shaykh Abdul Razak says, the news of the Quran is an admonition for those who accept warnings. For those who accept warnings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Imran, verse 138, هذا بيان للناس وهدى وموعظة للمتقين. This Quran is a plain statement for mankind. Once again, it's for all people. It's not for certain people, but for mankind. A guidance and in an instruction to those who are pious. May Allah make us from the pious. I mean. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuha al-nas, waqad jaatkum maw'idatun min rabbikum, wa shifa'un lima fi sudur, wa hudan wa rahmatun lil mu'mineen. Some of these verses they already was mentioned in the previous chapters, alhamdulillah. Like, like this one as well, in Surah Yunus, chapter 10, verse 57. O mankind, there has... There has come to you, not there has to come to you. That's, that's a misprint right there. If you kind of cross out that too. There has come to you instruction from your Lord. Okay? There has come to you instruction from your Lord, 
and healing for what is in the breasts, and guidance and mercy for the believers. Look at this description in the attributes of the Quran. His instruction from your Lord, Allah Akbar. The healing, guidance, and mercy, but for who? For the believers. Shaykh Abdul Razak said, Those who look at the stories of the Quran will find in them warnings and lessons. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Surah Yusuf, chapter 12, verse 111. لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبْرَةٌ لِأُولِ الْأَلْبَابِ Indeed, in their stories, stories of the previous nations, indeed, in their stories, there is a lesson for people of understanding. He said in his line of poetry, Havid Hakam, he said, its examples are lessons. Meaning, it is a lesson for those who have understanding, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Ankabut, that's chapter 29, verse 43. And these similitudes we put forward for mankind, but none will understand them except those who have knowledge. May Allah grant us knowledge and grant us sound understanding I mean also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Hashr that's chapter 59 verse 21 such are the parables which we put forward to mankind that they may reflect so many are the stories ya khwan, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrate to us many are the stories Especially the stories of the people, the, the prophets with their people. Allah also tells us the stories of the righteous and the pious so that we can emulate their example and follow in their, in their footsteps. Yes, they are pious and righteous, but they went through some trials and tribulation. They were put to test. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the good end is for the believers, for the pious, for the righteous. So you pay attention to those stories, and then if you go through certain things in your life, just hold on firm to the deen of Allah. Hold on firm to Tawheed and sound creed. What you go through, there are prophets and messengers, they went through more than that. More than that. And you say, Alhamdulillah, yes, it's okay to lose money, possession, health, wealth, that you cannot afford to lose your religion. Because even if you spend the rest of your life broke or sick, but if you die upon Islam, Tawheed Sunnah, you go to Jannah. In Jannah there is no poverty, no sickness, no illness, nobody point a finger to you, call your name, nothing. May Allah make us the people of Jannah. But if someone is always healthy, a lot of money, position, but no Islam has a big problem. Okay then. Likewise, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrates to us the stories of the wicked and the tyrants and rebellious and the criminals and, and what happened to them so that we can stay away from them and don't follow the example. He said, as for his statement, all of it, all of it is amazing. Meaning, all of the Qur'an is amazing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Jinn, chapter 72, verse number 1, قُلْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّهُ اسْتَمَعَ نَفَرٌ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَقَالُوا فَقَالُوا إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا قُرْآنًا عَجَبًا Say, O Muhammad sallam, it has been revealed to me that a group of the jinn listened and said, Indeed, we have heard an amazing Qur'an. Indeed, we have heard an amazing Qur'an. And also in Surah Al-Ahqaf, similar ayat and verses. As for his statement, distancing those who are deaf, meaning it distances those who turn deaf, a deaf ear, to listen to its guidance and the truth. 
which the Book of Allah has come with. So, Quran is a great mean to get the people closer to Allah SWT. Guarantee for them all good in this life and the everlasting bliss on the day of judgment. But not everybody is going to be get closer. Certain people, they will be distanced away and put cast away because they don't. They, they play like they didn't hear the Quran. The next chapter, the jinn who heard the Quran from the Prophet. The Shaykh, he mentioned that and highlighted it in his, in his poem. قَلَّمْ تَلْبَتِ الْجِنُّ إِذْ أَسْغَتْ لِتَسْمَعَهُ إِنْ بَادَرُوا نُذُرًا مِنْهُمْ لِقَوْمِهِمِ The jinn did not linger when they tilted in to listen before rushing to warn their people. قالوا يا قومنا أجيبوا داعي الله وآمنوا به يغفر لكم هكذا he said here Sheikh Abdul Razak said here it mentions the story of a group of jinn whom Allah عز وجل honored and they listened to the Quran from the voice of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم a group of jinn Allah honored them and they listened to the Quran directly from the Prophet ﷺ. They tilted in, meaning to bend or lean over and incline towards something. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-An'am, verse 113, And it is so the hearts of those who disbelieve in the hereafter will incline towards it. He says that for his statement before rushing to warn their people, still about the jinn, those group of jinn who listen to the Quran from the Prophet ﷺ, some of the Quran, meaning once they heard this wise reminder, this wise reminder, and this great speech, they returned to their people as warners. These are the jinn, not the human being. These are the jinn, they turn to their people as warners. As Allah tells us, Surah Al-Ahqaf, chapter 46, verse 31. وَإِذْ صَرَفْنَا إِلَيْكَ نَفَرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقُرْآنِ فَلَمَّا حَضَرُوهُ قَالُوا أَنْصِتُوا فَلَمَّا قُدِيَ وَلَّوْا إِلَى قَوْمِهِمْ مُنْذِرِينَ قَالُوا يَا قَوْمَنَا إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا كِتَابًا أُنْزِيَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مُوسَى يَهْدِي إِلَى الْحَقِّ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْحَقِّ وَإِلَى طَرِيقٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ يا قومنا أجيب داعي الله وآمنوا به إيش النتيجة يغفر لكم من ذنوبكم ويجيركم من عذاب الجنين. The translation of this verse or verses actually from the verse 29 to 31. And remember when we sent toward you, O Muhammad, a group of jinn quietly listening to the Quran. When they stood in the presence, they said, listen, in silence. And when it was finished, they returned to their people as warners. They said, O our people, indeed we have heard a book revealed after Musa, confirming what was before it, which guides to the truth and to a straight path. O our people, respond to the Messenger of Allah and believe in Him. Allah will forgive you for your sins. That's a natija, that's the fruit. will forgive your sins and protect you from painful punishments. So once again, Islam is not just for human beings, but it's for mankind. For human beings and for the jinn as well. And it's a Quran is a guidance for mankind, for human beings and for the jinn. Any human being. You're a human being, Islam is for you. Doesn't matter because as there is some misconception, somebody says, No, 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 no. Since Muhammad وسلم, was an Arab, so Islam is only for the Arabs. We're not Arabs, don't talk to us. Which is wrong. Yes, he was an Arab, 
but he was sent to all mankind. He was sent to the Arabs and the non-Arabs. Sent amongst certain people, his people at that time, but his message is universal as we learned before. For all times, all places, all people, mankind, jinn and human being. <clears throat> so, sometimes you may come in, co in contact with some people and you try to call them to Al Islam and they're like, eh, yeah, we're American, man. We're not Arabs. Because that prophet was Arab, Quran is in Arabic. No, no, that's not for us, that's not our prophet, it's only for the Arabs. But no, you, you explained to them and said, no, it's not the case. Yes, you're right, the Quran is in Arabic, it was revealed in Arabic. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was an Arab and spoke Arabic, but Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, who created us and provides for us endless bounties, he said that he was sent to everybody, Arabs and non-Arabs, black and white, rich and poor, everybody. Not in his time, until the establishment of the Day of Judgment. So if somebody really cared about himself and serious, they are like, wait a minute. This is new to me. Wow, he was sent to everybody? And Allah, the Creator, He's going to ask us about His message? Yes. What about if I just hold on to the message of Isa, Jesus? It's not enough. You tell them, how can I tell them? It's not enough anymore. Why is it not enough? Because Allah who sent Jesus is the one who sent Muhammad. Now, the people in the time of Isa, and after Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, and before the message of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu if they hold on to what Isa left for them, alhamdulillah, they are upon good. Likewise, the people of Musa, if anyone was holding to what Musa alayhi salam left in truth, then they are okay. But after the sending of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam with the message of Islam, which is the final message, Allah made it an obligation upon everyone to follow this message. So those who want good for themselves, they adhere to the Messenger وسلم, message. And if they do, how do you know they are on the message of Isa and the message of Jesus and the message of Musa anyway? Because the Prophet وسلم, he teaches the same thing, Tawheed. Same thing that Isa السلام, and Musa, they taught. Same thing, Muhammad, Islam. To, to, build, to, to worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be a part of Tawheed, Islamic monotheism. So Musa, Isa, Muhammad, alayhi wa sallam, different prophets, but they have one message. They are different prophets, came in different eras, but their message is one. All of them called to Islam. All of them called to Tawheed. Alhamdulillah. Then those that Allah wants good for them, they're going to say, well, so I didn't know this. Do you have anything? I want to know about this message that is for me. You have some books, eh? Here is a book, here is two. If you finish this book, I'll give you another one. There is some classes you can come and attend. But there is other people, they're going to grow out of it. like, listen, man, I don't know what you're talking about. There's an Arab, we're not, and this is it. You be patient with them, you never know. Another time you talk to them. Tawfiq is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we're going to move on to the next chapter, the miracles of the Qur'an. The miracles of the noble Qur'an. Shaykh Habib Hakami rahimahu ta'ala, he says, Allahu akbaru ma qad haza min ibarin wa min bayanin wa i'jazin wa min hikami. Yani Qur'an. Allahu akbar, he says, the Qur'an contains lessons of clarity and inimitability and wisdom. The explanation here he says, Sheikh Abdul Razak, he said, the Sheikh says the takbir. He began this line of poetry by saying, Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest. And that which follows is glorification of Allah, Azza wa Jal. He says the takbir is said to glorify Allah. Azzawajal, and due to amazement. Takbir, similar to this, is the takbir of the companions when the Prophet gave them the glad tidings that the Muslims would be half of the inhabitants of paradise. They say, Allahu Akbar. 
they respond by saying Allahu Akbar. So if you're amazed you hear something good, you say Allahu Akbar. Yes, you can say that. Okay? If you hear anything amazing, something good, you say Allahu Akbar. But there is no, as for the practice of certain people, when one of them say Takbir, they all say Allahu Akbar, Takbir, Allahu Akbar, Takbir, Allahu Akbar. Three times. If you say it the fourth time, you say it as a bid'ah. <laughs> but what about the first three ones? Is sunnah? <laughs> huh? No. We don't, we don't know of any reports that one person say, Takbir. No. You say it yourself. You see something good, amazing, you say, Allahu Akbar. You see beautiful sunset, Allahu Akbar. You were fishing and you see some fish you never seen in your life. Fish that just jump in front of you. Sometimes it happens. Some fish they jump. Not only dolphins, some, some fish they jump. Small fish jump. And you see that fish, you say, Allahu Akbar. Hmm? Especially tonight for noon. You see, you see good things and you say, Allahu Akbar. No, love us, it's good. He said it contains lessons of clarity because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Quran, Hada bayanu linnas. Hada bayanu linnas. This Quran is a clear statement for mankind. It has clear evidence that explains to the people the difference between truth and falsehood. It's not uh, the truth and falsehood, they're not mixed in Quran, and you don't even know what is the truth for falsehood, and it's ambiguous, and it's not clear. No, it's very clear. Truth is distinct from falsehood. Guidance is clear and distinct from misguidance. Likewise, disbelief and faith. They're very clear matters. They're not mixed. The same way at home. You have a bottle of bleach and you have a bottle of milk. Are they mixed together? They're not even found in the same area, right or wrong. Not along in the same jar or same bottle. Bleach usually what it is? Bleach. A cleaning aisle. A cleaning aisle. A very good answer. Zakallah khair. What's your name again? Ali. 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 Zakallah khair. In the cleaning aisle. Which is the word that's cleaning aisle. Usually in the kitchen, bathroom, right? But the milk usually where it is? In the milk aisle. Oh, you're talking about the store. <laughs> that's why he said the cleaning aisle. In the store. <laughs> in Walmart and Publix. Because me, I was... My mind was in the house. I'm like, clean, I'm in the house. This house must be very organized. <laughs> that's, what, that's what my mind was. Because me, I was thinking about the house. And he said, clean and I said something. I don't know. They so organized, man. They have aisles in the house. But in the house. Huh? <laughs> but let us stick, stick with what Ali said. In the store, you have an aisle. The bleach is in the cleaning aisle. You find you the bread? No. Yes, you may. You may find you with the bread. Who can explain? Bleach bread. Yeah. A jar of, ble- of bleach right there by bread. Is that right? Somebody put it there. Somebody who doesn't care put it in there. There are people who don't care. Didn't you feel like fish? Sometimes you find a box of shrimp supposed to be in the, in the freezer, it's right there with the, with, the, with the bread, with the pasta. People didn't put stuff instead to put it when it belonged. Walmart. We Muslims, huh? Walmart. Yeah, Walmart. <laughs> and, huh? Yes, people, no, if you take something, try to put it back where it, where it belongs, okay? Especially perishable things. <coughs> Especially bleach would melt with, with, come on, with bread. So the Quran clarify everything. You cannot be Muslim and non Muslim at the same time. Disbeliever and a believer. Doing an act of innovation and sunnah at the same time. You just can't. Everything is clear. 
truth is very clear from falsehood. No confusion, alhamdulillah. He says the word i'jaz comes from the word that means the opposite of ability. And the meaning of it in the, uh, in the Quran is the inability of the creation. They can't produce anything like it. They can't. Nobody can produce the like of the Quran, not even a chapter, not even a verse, nothing. A challenge to them to bring anything comparable to the Qur'an. Allah challenged those people who they were so eloquent. He's going to mention, he's going to come later on. In a chapter, two chapters down, there is a chapter that a refutation against those who, they so eloquent in the Arabic language, but still they cannot produce a verse, the like of the Qur'an. So he mentioned in a, in a blind poetry, Allahu Akbar, on certain things, and he said, Wallahu Akbar, id a'yat balaghatuhu wa husnu tarkibihi lil'urbi wal'ajami. Yani al-Arab wal'ajami. Then once again he said, Allahu Akbar, because it's something amazing. What is this amazing thing? He said, its eloquence, the Qur'an, and its good composition have rendered the Arab and non-Arab incapable to produce anything like it. In the explanation, Sheikh Abdul Razak says, eloquence is the linguistic correctness of the speech. Is the linguistic correctness of the speech and how it coincides with the required situation. But remember, eloquence by itself is not a sign that a person has knowledge or alim. Some people, they can't put something together, but they may be calling to falsehood like Ahlul Bida, people of inno- innovation and deviancy, they, they, some of them can speak. You attend their talks and you're like, wow, that person can't talk. Yeah, but you're not there for a talk. You're there to get something that's going to help you. قال الله قال الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم He said, its eloquence and composition have rendered the Arabs and the non-Arabs incapable, meaning the eloquence of the Qur'an and its good composition have rendered the Arabs and the Arabs powerless for any one of them to produce anything like it, or even one chapter like it, or even one verse. Even if they gather all of them, the jinn and the human being, they will not produce, as Allah SWT tells us. They will never produce the like of the Qur'an, not even a chapter or even a verse from the like of the, of the book of Allah. The next chapter is the failure of those who try to emulate the Qur'an. The failure of those who try to emulate the Qur'an. He said, كَمْ مُلْحِدٍ رَامَ أَنْ يُبْدِي مُعَارَدَةً فَعَادَ بِالذُّلِّ وَالْخُسْرَانِ وَالْرَغَمِ How many deviants sought to bring an opposition? and return debased, defeated, and belittled. He says the word mulhid, deviant, is to incline away from the truth and to introduce that which is not from it. Mulhid. And also it is used as from ilhad, which is like atheism, alayhi he said, how many deviants sought to bring an opposition? He says, meaning they sought to bring something that opposes the Qur'an. And this is the enemies of Islam. They want to bring something to oppose the Qur'an. they like, oh, there is uh, something, contradictions in the Qur'an. And then that's why you should know that there is no contradiction in the Qur'an. This is uh, your belief. But sometimes a person may try to see you uh, anywhere and say, hey, you're a Muslim, right? Yeah. Well, what do you say about this verse? They bring you a verse. They said, okay, what about the other verse? They contradict each, each other's, right? And you're like, wait a minute. If you say, those are not verses, <laughs> he's going to say, you have a cup of Quran with you? He says, no. He says, I don't have one. Here, read. Those bo- those, those, those they are from the Quran. Now, how are you going to you're like, wow, they are from Quran. I say, you don't even know your book? That's a problem. 
But then you say, look, man, they are not, there is no contradiction. It, the contradiction is in your weak understanding. That's why. Your understanding contradicts the Qur'an. Not the Qur'an contradicts, it's, it's, it's part of it contradicts other parts. But your weak understanding contradicts the meaning, the true meaning of this. If you want the meaning, if you know, give it to him. If you don't, tell him, hey, I refer you to Tafsir ibn Kathir. Who well, am I going to get this from? You have a noble Qur'an. Where do you get this from? Same way you get a copy of the Qur'an, you can get a copy of Tafsir ibn Kathir. If you really want the truth. And this happened with me once. I was in Walmart a long time, maybe 20 years ago or so. Or maybe 18. This was a long time. Because I remember... Muhammad Amin was a little kid. Hey, and then there was this guy, African American. He came to me and he said, You're Muslim, huh? I said, Alhamdulillah. And he's like, oh, Can you talk? Can I, can, can I talk to you about your book? I said, uh, We're shopping right now. <coughs> it doesn't gonna take much time. He said, No, 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 no. And then he brought me two ayahs. He said, What do you say about these two ayahs? I said, come to the mosque. And we talk about it from the books. He said, no, no, you tell me what you think. I said, we don't think. This is the book, Islam. This is Islam. We don't speak from our opinions. We speak with knowledge. If we know, we say, yes, this is what it means. If I don't know, I said, I don't know. And I will refer it to those who know. But then he didn't want to come. <clears throat> See, they just want to try to bring confusion. I remember once, another time, <clears throat> another time, uh, I was in California. And when I got there, brother, they said to me, oh, this, 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 this guy want to come, and he comes sometimes, white guy, you know, older. And he's uh, very educated and this and that. And he comes and he wants to learn about Islam. And uh, they said, he want to sit with you? I told them, look. I asked him certain questions, but then one brother, he came and he says, uh, Abu Muhammad, that person that they're talking about, something fishy about him. He said, he comes and he, he says some very weird stuff, and this brother, they don't know. I said, okay. When he comes tomorrow, don't tell him about me. I'm just going to sit like I'm just one of the people, this. And that's what happened. And then they said, oh, he came to learn about Islam. And then he started talking, and he started calling us to Christianity. Mm -hmm. Oh, the Quran says, but it's not like this, but Jesus says. I said to him, excuse me, they said you come here to learn about Quran. He said, yeah, yeah, about Islam. Yeah, yeah. I said, this is not the way to learn. If you want to learn, you, 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 you sit down, and you have a notebook and a pencil, and, and take notes and listen to those that are going to teach you. That's learning. Are you going to go learn and start teaching the, the teacher? Mm -hmm. Ali, what, what, uh, what, uh, what uh, grade you're in? Fourth, fourth going to the fifth? Okay. Let's say you're in the fourth because you didn't get to the fifth yet, right? Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. When you go to school and you sit in the classroom, who's explaining the class? You or the teacher? The teacher. Hey. Simple, right or wrong. What if you go until the teacher sit down in my spot? I'm, I'm, I'm teaching today. What the teacher is going to say? Uh, Does it make sense first? No. Doesn't make no sense. You're the student and he's the teacher. And that's the normal thing. Likewise, this is very important. If you have ever someone who come to you and say, Hey, listen, you're a Muslim, you have some time, I want, I want to learn about Islam, I want to, you know, have things. So, okay. But then once he start talking about Islam, oh yeah, Islam, is a lot of contradiction, and Prophet Muhammad, we don't even know whatever he says, if it's true or not. He say, excuse me? Are you here to teach me or are you here to ask me? Because he says you want to acquire about Islam, right? But this is not how it's done. Now you're talking to me? No, you should listen. I'm not going to listen. Oh, we'll see you later. This is how it should be done. 
in Hamburg. But some people, they don't understand what's like. And then they came and they put doubts in their, in their hearts and their minds. And before you know it, they're like, oh, I don't know, man, what they teach us in that masjid. No, they teach you good in the masjid. If the masjid is upon the sunnah, you just have to be careful who is going to talk to you. Okay? <coughs> no. And return the base, he says, as for his statement, and return the base, defeated and belittled, he says, no more is deviance. Many deviants attempted to bring something similar to the Quran, and the end result was humiliation, defeat, and belittlement. Right now. He said, history, Sheikh Abdul Razak, he said, history has shown that those who attempt, who attempted to bring something similar to the Quran, faced one of, the, of two outcomes. Either they were faced with failure and inability, or they produced some absurdities, nonsense, loathsome speech, nothing. He said the first example is what was mentioned by a Shokani. Shokani, Imam Shokani, one of the ulama of the Salaf. In his explanation of the beginning of Surah Al-Ma'idah, when he says, it, meaning the Qur'an, contains eloquence with, which renders human ability incapable, he said, it contains verdicts with inclusions, such as fulfilling the trust, permitting camels, cattle and sheep, along with exclusion, of that which is not permissible, such as prohi- prohibiting hunting within the limits of the sanctuary, haram, of Mecca and Medina, and allowing what is outside the sanctuary. It has been narrated concerning a discussion among some philosophers from Canada. He said, a group of them said to, to one of them, always one, work with us to produce our own Quran work with us to produce our own Qur'an. He replied, okay, I will work on my portion. He disappeared for a number of days and then returned. He said, by Allah, I am not able, and no one has the ability to do so. Verily, I opened the Mus'haf and turned to Surah Al-Ma'idah. When I opened this chapter, I spoke, it spoke of fulfilling the trust and the prohibition of violating it. It allows certain matters in general, and then mentioned the exceptions. Then it spoke of his power and wisdom, subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of this was was contained in just two lines, subhanAllah, in just two lines. No one is able to produce anything similar to this. But this is for those who pay attention and they have some understanding. He said the second example is found in the story of Musaylim al-Kaddaf, the liar. This man, he claimed to be a, a prophet. This is the time of the Sahaba. Ibn Kathir rahimah ta'ala, mentioned this story in his tafsir. He said, Amr ibn al-As, radiallahu anhu, even before he embraced Islam. And this, is, <laughs> this man claimed prophethood even when the Prophet was still alive. So Amr ibn al-As, before he became Muslim, okay, went to Musaylima the liar. So Musaylima, who at that time claimed to be a prophet too, he told them, okay, Muhammad is a prophet, I'm a prophet too. They said to him, well, but Muhammad ibn Abdullah, he received revelation from Allah. He said, I received revelation too. You receive revelation too? Okay, recite because Prophet Muhammad he recited to us what he received from Allah. <laughs> so Musaylim said to him, Okay, what has been revealed to your companion in Mecca at this time? Okay, Musaylim, <laughs> when Amr al As went and he said to him, Musaylim said, What's your companion? Meaning, 
It's not as a companion because Amr ibn Asad at that time he was not a Muslim yet. Meaning, your companion, meaning the person that you know from the same city, you know, they call that a companion also. He said, what's your companion? What, have, what has been revealed to your companion in Mecca at this time? Amr said to him, indeed, a concise, eloquent surah. Look, he was not even Muslim. Indeed, a concise, eloquent surah has been revealed to him. Musaylima replied, what is it? And Amr said, wal asr, inna l-insana lafi khusr, illa alladhina amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bil sabr. By the time indeed mankind is in loss, except those who believe and do righteous good deeds, and recommend one another to the truth, and recommend one another to patience. So it lasts. So now Musaylima, he listened to the Qur'an, he says, the Shaykh said, Musaylima taught for an hour or so. He was thinking. Then he raised his hand, his head and said, indeed something similar to this has been revealed to me. A liar. So Amr said, what is it? All right, what, what, is, what, what was just being revealed to you? Musaylima said, ya wabru, ya wabru, innama anti udunanin wa sadru. وَسَائِرُكَ حَقْرٌ فَقْرٌ Allah knows that. Which translates, all rock rabbit, all rock rabbit. Yeah, Allah <laughs> You are only two ears and a chest. And the rest of you is lowly and Im- impoverished. Then Musaylima said, oh Amr, what do you think about, about it? Huh? Amr said, by Allah, you know that I know that you are lying. <laughs> and he wasn't even a Muslim. <laughs> he looked, at that time, he said to him, by Allah, because they believed in Allah. They just, their problem was singling out Allah SWT and leaving all those idols that they believed that they get them closer to Allah and intermediaries. They believed in Allah and they know that Allah is Al-Khaliq, Al-Raziq. So he said to him, by Allah, you know that I know that you are lying. Allah. <laughs> the next chapter goes along with this one. It says the Quran challenges the eloquent experts of the Arabic language. Subhanallah. <laughs> Away with those who attempted, intended, and what they wished, for you have surely failed in your humiliation. The explanation, Shaykh Abdul Razak says, those deviants who tried, attempted, and struggled to produce something similar to this Quran, then away with them and their attempts. This means that this incomprehensible attempt by them has no way to be achieved. They will never be able to achieve the life of this world. The next poem, and we, we may conclude this lesson with this, and we open the door for Shalatara discussion and قال خابت أمانيهم شاهت وجوههم زاغت قلوبهم عن هديه القيم Their wishes have failed. May their faces be disfigured and hearts turned away from its precious guidance. In the explanation, Shaykh Abdul Razak says, meaning they have been met with failure, loss, humiliation, and the inability to fulfill their intent. My dear faces be disfigured. He said, this is a supplication against these deviants, that Allah Azza wa Jal disfigure their faces, meaning make their faces ugly. When the Prophet Sallallahu threw small rocks at the pagans during the battle of Hunayn, he said, Shahati al-Wujuh, my dear faces be disfigured. As in Sahih Muslim. And thus Allah Subh'ala defeated the pagans. 
of Ibn Qabil Hawazi and those who were with them. Naam Ali. What is pagans? The pagans are the disbelievers. Oh. At that time, in the time of the Prophet وسلم, those who they disbelieve and oppose the message of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and they were worshipping idols, okay? Statues and stuff. They call them pagans. قال الحافظ حكم رحمه الله كم قد تحدى قريشا في القديم وهم أهل البلاغة بين الخلق كلهم How many challenges went out to the Quraysh by the Quran while they are the most eloquent of all the creation at that time they were very eloquent but still they couldn't do nothing with the Quran in the explanation the Shaykh said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenged them in many places in the Quran the tribe of Quraysh were the most eloquent people of all the creation, and the world recognizes them for this trait. Yet the end result for their attempt was failure. It was easy for them to say poetry. They used to say it like this. It's not like they have to learn poetry. They used to talk to each other with poetry, many of them. That's, they, they didn't need to learn learn the, 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 the grammar. To, no, that's, that's, that's how they talk to each other. But yet, they couldn't produce nothing the like of the Qur'an. Ibn Kathir, rahimahu ta'ala, mentioned the miracles of the prophets and said, and likewise, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was sent to a people during a time of eloquence and poets. Thus Allah Azza wa Jal sent him with a book from Allah the Exalted, the like of which if mankind and a jinn got together to produce something similar to it, they could not do so, nor could they produce even ten chapters like it, nor could they even produce even one chapter like it, even if they assisted one another. This is only because the speech of the Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will never resemble the speech of the creation. Okay. We're going to stop here, inshallah ta'ala. <coughs> we uh, continue tomorrow. And we may finish it tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. And then uh, we may review on Wednesday. Okay, on Wednesday you will bring the book. I will mention the chapter. Or we will have a discussion. We want few of you to to uh, to highlight a chapter and share with us. That's on Wednesday, and maybe tomorrow too, because we don't have. We have only like few pages to finish. We may start. We finish tomorrow night and start that discussion. Inshallah, Taala. Okay. So I want you to highlight some chapters, one, two, three, or more or less. And then, inshallah ta'ala, you tell us. Write down the summary. It would be nice if you even write it down and read to us, okay? Inshallah ta'ala. from one of the sisters. Uh, you, you never, you didn't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, huh? <laughs> you were, you were holding to it all this time? Okay. All right. Okay. So we start at the page 115, okay? Let me first uh, write down. What session was this? Eight. Eight, I sent. It says there is a question. We'll read this question, inshallah ta'ala. Question or questions? <laughs> he didn't know, Ali. One paper, four questions, Lama Bari. After the Adhan, inshallah.
We're going to start with these uh, questions, with like four very important questions. First question is that what would you, what, what would you advise a sister who works sometimes a lot of hours and would prefer her child to go study instead of leaving him with disbelieving family members for a long period of time, they're Christians and they play gospel music. First of all, my Lottie word is a sister and she is a mother because she wants good for her child. My Lottie word her and we commend her for this. This is, this is a good thing. But we want to make, we want to ask why is she working long hours? If she's a single mother and she needs to work because that's the only way she can take care of herself and, and her, her children, if she has more than one, then may Allah have mercy on her and help her. Okay, because sometimes you got to do what you got to do to, put, to, to keep, you know, necessities. But if this one mother she's married for example and the husband who should maintain the household not the woman that maintain the household and she just work we say hey first of all if you don't need to work just spend time in the house teaching your children and be there for them and if she has to work then cut down on the hour don't work a lot and like I said, it's beautiful to hear that she has concern. She wants her child to learn. So we say, if you live close to the masjid, and uh, she can talk to some other sisters, and we should help one another like this. And those sisters, she will go to one of them, or couple say, look, I got a child, I got a son, and his age is such and such. I want him to go to the masjid. Can your husband or your uncles or whatever bring him to the masjid, to salah, bring him to the class? And we should help one another like that, okay? should help one another, inshallah ta'ala. Question number two. If you see something not necessarily good, like car accident, and you say, Allahu Akbar, is this incorrect? And we said, you say, Allahu Akbar for something that is amazing, something... Huh? Alhamdulillah. Number three, what is the way to correct or what is the fatwa for salat? For example, asr or duhr, instead of four rak'at, you make five rak'at by mistake. Remember, the mistake is a human. We, we, we forget sometimes, we make mistakes. As long as the mistakes is not done on purpose. For example, if a Muslim or a Muslima they know that the Zohar is four rak'at. They cannot pray five. They're like, I'm just going to pray five. No, that's not permissible. But if you are praying and then in the middle, while you're, while you're praying, you add the rak'at, then alhamdulillah, out of forgetfulness, by mistake, then you, you pray to, you do the suju the sahu, alhamdulillah. Number four, what is a concise answer to when kafar either in curiosity or trying to degrade the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet, ask, when they ask about the age of Aisha radiallahu anha when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam married her. This is from the misconceptions and from the doubts that some people they bring. Some <coughs> Muslims, they try to bring to Islam and they say that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was old, you know, he was some 50 years old and he married a 9 years old. She was a baby and this and that and minor, how could he? And, and many other things. The ulama, they, they, they refute that doubt. Okay? And they say, at that time, at that time it was something normal that some girls, when they each that, that age, they, they were married. And it's no problem. Okay, because women, they're not all the same physiology, right? Some of them, mashallah, they're different than others. He said, keep in mind now, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he has enemies or not at that time. He has many enemies. They lied on him. 
they lied on him many times, right? If this practice was something that is bad at that time, why nobody mentioned anything about it from them? You see what I'm talking about? You understand? If, if at that time, marrying a nine-year-old girl, okay, was something very bad at their time, why they didn't use that against him? Why? Because he was okay at that time. Huh? He was normal. He was normal at that time. He may not be normal in certain societies. In this society, it's not normal. They do it their way. But if a prophet do it, it's a problem. You see? So that's how you, you, you explain to them. Because sometimes, like you said, some, some people by curiosity, some curiosity, some people they just narrate what they hear. Because the enemies of Islam, they just throw and cast doubt out there. So you tell them, this man, the prophet, as all other prophets, they have enemies. And usually the enemies, they lie a lot. Because that's what their main goal is to degrade that person. They will fabricate lies. Now, if they have something concrete, why didn't use it? Huh? Why? Because it was normal as the brothers. At the time, if a woman are able to get married in that age, it was something that is normal. No problem. I know. Allahu Alaihi and we learn these type of classes, right? especially uh, the author and the Imam, uh, he speaks about the Quran, the Surah Elephant, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenged uh, the creation to bring the life of this Quran, to bring even one uh, Surah, one verse. And you wouldn't be able to produce anything like the Quran. And this leads us to.